Hello everyone. This is my 2013 Ford F-150 with a 3.5 EcoBoost engine. It's a new to me vehicle. I picked this truck up for about $6,000. It's got 240,000 miles on it. Overall in decent shape, but uh, this day and age in 2022, trying to buy even a mechanic special uh, truck at a reasonable price is almost impossible these days. But this was a truck in particular that I had been wanting it's a full-size four-door, the six-and-a-half-foot bed, and the 3.5 EcoBoost engine. So I bought the truck thinking that it needed timing chains and timing components. Uh, when the engine ran, it ran lean. It had a rattle during cold starts, and it idled rough. It set a manifold absolute pressure sensor uh, performance code, P0106. And so I went out and got, uh, well, I ordered about $1,500 worth of parts, which included all the timing components and a water pump and seals, gaskets, belts, tensioner, just a whole bunch of things to freshen the front end of the engine up while I had it all apart. So about uh, two or three nights of work later, I get everything back together. I fill it up with coolant. I start it up, and the engine still runs like crap. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, beautiful. A little bit of a dry start there, but no big deal. Got a little cheech back there, but not too bad. Oh. I wonder what that was about. Maybe I just got to do a relearn or something. Yeah, we got a check engine light. I don't know what that's for, but... It still idles rough, and it stumbles on acceleration, and the check engine light and the wrench light all came on. So needless to say, that was pretty discouraging. I thought for sure I had fixed it when it didn't have the cold start rattle noise during startup anymore, and lo and behold, the problem persisted. So I did what I should have done from the very beginning, and uh, got my scan tool out, read the codes, and I had a P... 0106 diagnostic trouble code set in the PCM. And what that code is, is it's a manifold absolute pressure sensor performance or range code. And the sensor in particular that we're looking at right here is one that sits right there on top of the intake manifold. Super easy to get to. One seven millimeter bolt and one uh, electrical connector, it comes off. Here's what the old sensor looks like. This is all it is. You can get a Motorcraft one for about 70 bucks or so on 70, 80 bucks online. So that's the data that I started looking at because that's the code that set. Now what the manifold absolute pressure sensor does is it determines the, or it tells the engine control module, the powertrain control module, whichever one you have, the, basically the engine computer over here, what the pressure or at idle, the vacuum is on the intake manifold. Now, one of the ways to tell if your MAP sensor is bad or not is to turn the key on with the engine off. And if you have a barometric pressure sensor or a turbocharger boost pressure sensor like this engine does, all three of those sensors should be in the same range pressure-wise when the key is on and the engine is off because the engine is not under vacuum at idle and it's not generating any boost from the turbochargers when under load. So currently I have the old MAP sensor plugged in and just sitting on top of the intake. The pressure is going to be the same inside and outside the intake while the engine is off. Let's take a look at the data here. Our barometric pressure is 98 kilopascals, kPa. The manifold absolute pressure is 74 kPa. So there's a significant difference here. 
And then our third one, the measured boost at the throttle inlet is 14.2 PSI, which comes out to about 98 to 100 kilopascals. So these two sensors agree, the measured boost and the barometric pressure sensor agree. What does not agree is the manifold absolute pressure sensor. This is where I started to finally figure out what was going on. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to leave this graph running. As you can see, it's graphing the information here. 74 is our minimum and our maximum here. We're going to unplug the old map sensor. Okay, here's the old sensor. I've already got the new one installed right here. And we're going to plug the new one in. Let's see what happens. Let's go look at our data. Now, as you can see, we're between 96 and 97 kilopascals now, much, much closer to 98. The spec is 6 kPa. As long as these sensors, these readings are within 6 kPa of each other, everything is working properly. You can see here when I disconnected it, it went to the high signal. And now that I've reconnected it, now it's reading 96, 97. That ended up being the fix to my F-150 with the check engine light and the wrench light and the P0106 code. Keep in mind that if you have this problem, you'll also get lean codes because if this manifold absolute pressure sensor is reading low, what it's going to do is it's going to open the throttle body more to let more air in. This causes the engine to run lean. The engine will run as if it has a vacuum leak. And if you take a look at your map sensor data here, this is probably what you're gonna find. So let's start it up. Check engine light will probably be on from that uh, sensor. I haven't cleared the codes yet. And as you can see, we have a nice smooth idle now. Map sensor is reading properly. As the engine starts to idle down, this is going to decrease. Everything looks normal and man, this engine is so much smoother. No more rough idle, no more loss of power, no more wrench light, and hopefully no more check engine light once I get the uh, codes cleared here. So there we go. I did a bunch of online research and I couldn't find any videos. There were tons of videos of people out there cleaning them. And I tried that. I tried cleaning the map sensor on mine and you know, nothing happened, nothing fixed it. It's, it's puzzling though, because it almost looks like somebody either did a very good thorough job of cleaning this or replaced it at some point because this sensor looks brand new. But nevertheless, it's defective. It is not working right, so we're just gonna to toss that over there where it belongs in the trash. And that has fixed our problem. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, and most importantly, I hope that it helped you out if you had a similar problem. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you next time.